So we were talking about clap, yeah. So I thought I'd, um, I'd demystify the beginning a little because I think when you, when you look at a piece of music, you usually want to play the beginning. You know, if you can't play that, then you, know, you can't get into the next bit. It's all about chord inversions and it's all about sort of minimal bass picking because you know, what I was doing earlier when I was doing something like uh, the Golden Mean had uh, you know, two kinds of bass picking. This kind of bass picking, whatever you do, that's got to keep going. You know what I mean? But that's the, uh, that isn't what happens in clap. I mean, it sounds like that, but it isn't really happening because the first actual movement is this. So you know, where's the bass in there? But it's still okay because you think it's there. You know what I mean? Because it is coming. So it's. So I'm really on the fifths of the chord quite quickly. I'm not on roots. Root. Third. Fifth. And then the F sharp seven. So that, that bit then has got these. I can play it as a sort of jazz vamp. Or oh, this, is, this one's good. I do this some night, not very often. Actually, this guitar is quite good fun. I'm having fun on this guitar. It's just surprising. That, that bit is super, super tricky. Um, so you get right in the tune, and you think, oh, I'm getting this, and you get this bit. Now you can bluff it really easily just by not even picking it, but just go. But to pick it, 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 it's more pure. That's how you should be doing it. And most, if I'm having a good night, I pick it. If, if I'm struggling, then I'll, I'll bluff it too. But this one is, this is how you should play it. So it's mostly picking. As you can see, it is quite intricate. So you can do it just by this. It, actually, to me, it doesn't sound quite as good, but it's still there. You know. So you play the tune again. But this time, maybe, instead of just, uh, it gives a little difference. It's quite nice. Same stuff. So what the concept is, that's your verse. So each time you get to this D, something different is going to happen, and it does. So the next time you get to it, instead of this, you get this. So those shapes, are, that's a D7. And you've got a sort of D9, and then another seven. Uh, what, what comes next? So that's really a six as well. Oh, that's a six now. So those little things make it interesting because you know you've got to tune. But what's really quite nice about clap is that there is so much of that stuff going in the middle of it, in between the different sections. And that was because um, you know I had all these licks; they weren't going anywhere. I wasn't playing them anywhere. And um, so, so anyway, then you, I guess after that one, it gets a bit more like uh, what I call. Um, uh, That's All Right Mama by Elvis Presley, you know, so... but the... which is quite kind of jazzy, really. If I... yeah. All sevens. It's really not baffling, it's not rocket science, it's just loads of sevens, but it's, just, it's all about inversions, isn't it? That's what makes it sing, really. Second. And we haven't, I think we've missed one bit out, the, the bit that is quite fun. Oh yeah, after this. Oh yeah. This bit. This is like taking the, the verse tune when only using the first two chords and moving the key. So. See? So that's all it is. Obviously, that's a hard one to do up there. See, could if I'd, if I was playing an 0018 without a uh, cutaway when I recorded it. So I put the next, after the first one, I put the next one down an octave to make it easy. And then went racing up to, but logically that almost could have been done up here. 
but it wouldn't have sounded quite the same. I like things that answer, you know, the, the, the greatest thing any musician can do is have something that he can answer himself, you know, it's, it's a great idea. And I often make up um, little uh, vamps, you know, that, that can do that. If you find a little vamp that you like and then you go off and improvise, keep coming back to it, it's a wonderful vehicle and that, that's basically what that is. Well, sometimes when I hear myself back live, I wish I did more damping on the bass strings. I have a tendency to start liking it without damping, you know, and the whole guitar is like ringing and singing, it's great, you know. I listen back and I think, no, oh, no, I should have kept it a bit more damp. So the damping's quite important, but as I say, I've just admitted, you know, undamping can be exciting as well because it, it's, it's bigger, louder, and it's droning more. But yeah, <laughs> having that, but also, um, a bit like I described earlier about Big Bunsi, that, that I think because of his influence, I, I, I'm not religious about the boop dip boop dip boop. It keep being absolutely the same all the time, uh, partly because sometimes the fingering won't allow for it properly, or in fact, what I'm doing on the top strings with my finger isn't isn't going to work unless I stop doing something so regimented there. So it's really a mix. So where were we up to clap? We did the we're up to this bit. We just, I, I, I used this example for answers. <laughs> Just finding that one note different makes it work, you know, because it was exactly the same, it sounded like this. What's up? You wouldn't recognize it, but just that, just being, so finding a little nuance, and then it's a, little, it's a stop. Obviously, which, you know, every night you, I play that, I kind of think, I'm going for this, I, this is not something I'm gonna miss, you know. But it, it, it's, it's quite a tricky one, and it's just a whole lot of puller. I don't know, I can't remember. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm using the same inversions there that were working on the. So in a way, it's kind of good, uh, in retrospect, to use things more than once, providing they're in a different way. You know, it's built into a different frame. Because then it's, you know, your writing is sort of like having um, uh, some recapitulations, they used to call them, or things like that. Where it's kind of, oh yeah, I've heard that before, but it's good that he brought it back, cause it, but it's not the same. You know, it's, it's built into another phrase. But uh, I guess, um, after that, it gets to this quiet bit, which I, I do like. Uh, I don't know, on the original... I think I just didn't do anything in the gap. Sometimes I fool around, like... You know, I'd throw something in for fun, really, or i tap. So I, I must confess, I, I need everything you could do on a guitar, you know, to keep pulling things from it. You know, that's what makes the guitar interesting. It's not like I'm really just deciding you know, I'm playing. I think there's an awful lot more you bring into the guitar by, by not just thinking about it like that, you know, but like so throwing stuff in, tapping the guitar. You know, it, it, it does make a nice ingredient. The bit I like here is when it gets really quiet. And I'm bringing this, this kind of six approach on it when it goes. But the other. To kind of get like a surprise element. Uh, uh, that was a bit over the top, but it, it, I do tend to try and get some surprise there. And as it goes down, um, <laughs> well, that, that's where it kind of veers off. Um, in the early days, I used to play classical gas in there. So at that point, I used to get to this E after the chords went. And then I go. And I do a whole classical gas, you know, and because I, when it came out, um, I should have written it, you know. It was like, I wrote that, didn't I? No, I didn't. But I should have done, because it's exactly my kind of thing, you know. So when it came out, uh, I had to learn it. And um, I think Eric might remember this, but I was in a room with Eric Clapton at his, he had a flat uh, way back, might have been in the 70s or 
late 60s or something. I'm out with this flat and Eric, Eric Clapton was there. He says to me, ah, he can play classical guitar. So I said, yeah. So he said, well, go on then. So I went and, and I kept his attention and he said, mm, pretty good. But um, like anything, if you want to learn it and you want to give it the time, and, and that's what things take. I mean, none of this happened because, you know, I was just lucky enough to, I could play behind my, behind my head or something. You know, it happened because I sat down and said, you know, I want to go for this. You know, I want to find this out. In the old days when I used to do classical jazz, I used to get out of it um, and, and fall into the next bit that I'm going to play. So occasionally I've done versions where there's no classical gas in it. I mean, no, there's, there's no sign of classical gas at all. And that would come up here. That, again, that is quite tricky picking, that bit, because even though I have trouble with that sometimes, it's a challenge just to keep it really to smooth. But the thing is, because you, you're only using one bass note on the first phrase. So it's just E to A, but... I slowed that down for some reason. I'm back into the tune. But what's going to happen is, of course, you're not going to play the whole tune because you're going to get a key change. And a key change is, is another thing, like, you know, what I was saying about use all the tricks, use everything, you, every little turn you can do. So a, a key change in that really helped clap build. So I go into clap. But... So I'm throwing the B to get me up to E. Then... See, I love that chord. That's my intersection blues, big blue brunzy chord, yeah. Now this bit got a lot of people, because once again, it's changing the styles. I'm mixing, picking, and then I'm using chord approach. And then I'm using... <laughs> and then the 13. doesn't seem to decrease over all these years. You know, I mean, I play it with such enthusiasm. In fact, I played it on the Asia tour and somebody, um, uh, the first night of the Asia tour, uh, there was somebody there um, that I know very well. And, and uh, afterwards they came and said, when you started playing clap, it was like, you know, I was so uh, excited uh, to play it. It's just surprising. And I wrote it in 1969, you know, and... Um, uh, it's so multifaceted, it's all different styles. It, it, it's great fun. I mean, I, I, in a way, I almost play it as if I didn't write it, because it's just something I play, you know. But writing it too was good fun, and it, wa it was on the evening of the night when my first son was born, when Dylan was born. So I still know that it was the, the, the night before the 4th of August, 1969, because I was sitting there, and... Um, um, his mother was going to give birth, and I was waiting, and uh, you know, I was staying up with the anticipation of him being born. And I swear to God, that I wrote that in in a, in a heat of the moment, if you like, because it was so exciting. I knew this this child was coming, and but it was also, as I've pointed out, it's really a Chet tribute, you know, Chet Atkins tribute, because Chet has been enormous uh, effect on me.